Jupiter Night! Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Batman. No, I'm Jeremy. <laughs> hey there, Batman. <laughs> Tonight's episode is all about superheroes, and it that is. really fits. Uh-huh. Uh, a new TV show has premiered this week that we're going to talk about, NBC's The Cape. For a change, we both got a chance to watch television. You I, know it was two hours. Honestly, I put aside the time in my schedule because yeah. it's superheroes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, it's you kind of made a the priority thing. list. Yeah. Yep. And then later on in the episode, uh, DC Universe Online has shipped, mm-hmm. and the J-Man here has got his hands all over that thing. I was like, all over beta. I've got some links for you over and stuff to talk about later. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that as well. But first, let's just start off with The Cape. Yeah. First impressions, uh, The Cape came out and... Go first, J-Man. What'd you think? Okay, well, first of all, it was a two-hour premiere. It was basically two episodes back-to-back. Yep. First episode, I actually quite a- enjoyed quite really? a bit. Okay, okay. Did not I mean, myself. Uh, I'll get to why I didn't, but the second one I just thought was campy trash, and it was just I. Why this? By the end of the second episode, I was sitting here going, "Why? Why am I watching this? I like why the second they... one better than the first one." <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, here's the reason that I actually went that route, and okay. I, I, I think I know why the first one might have turned you off a all little right, bit. All right, lay it on me. This show really buys into the fact that there are certain tropes, certain campy scenarios, certain things that you just have to come to accept in a superhero universe. Mm. And the cape kind of really buys into that. They put forth this universe that is not quite real, and just everybody that's there is totally on board with it. Oh, and you know, if, I don't want to derail you too far because I know where you're going here. That's but, pretty much the end of my Okay, I, I want to jump from there because I think the that is my issue with this show. is uh, is It's not bad. No. But it's not good. And it's not... It, it's not selling me on its universe for some reason because I think too many elements of the Capes universe are based in the real world, like mm-hmm. real cities and real things. But then they have like all these really weird characters and these weird like magicians. the Carnival of Crime, yeah, and stuff that just <laughs> is like, wait a minute, why are you in this reality-based place dealing with uh, uh, honestly? A, a privatized police force hired by a city is by kind the of way, an interesting concept. Stolen from RoboCop. Sure, sure. <laughs> but it's one that I like to play with because, you know, Blackwater yeah. and Halliburton are private military it things. It could and very well be something in our near future. Exactly. So I thought, okay, I like that element of it a lot. Mm-hmm. What I didn't like was this, this weird... This weird mixing of complete fantasy and complete reality because it just kept bouncing me around on top of a lot of the tropes that you're talking about, mm-hmm. like the magician stuff. And, and the training montage and the masks and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah the training montage. Yeah, uh, The fact that a hoodie makes you suddenly a completely different person. And and it, it plays a lot on the whole father-son relationship element. And Kid's a terrible actor, by the, the way. Exactly. Terrible. Exactly. Well, the dad's not much better himself. No, he's not. <laughs> Uh, it does have Summer Glau in it, though, from uh, Firefly. Also terrible in this, though. She hasn't been so good. No, I'm hoping that she improves, but... Uh, she does. She's, she's got a little fight scene. She's, she's fun to look at. Scenes, and she's got Especially some when she's wearing those high heels and short skirts, but... Uh, Are you going to watch uh, episode three? I'm going to give it a few more shots, yeah, see yeah. if it can win me back over. If I can buy into the universe and care a little bit about the character at the moment, I'm not... Uh, I'm not. I haven't made up my mind about the main character yet. I'm yeah. not like I'm not anti-main character. He's but I'm not, not entirely yet. sympathetic, right? Which is something you kind of need, especially for a superhero. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, it's not. I'm not bonding with him for one. Right. Um, but like you said at the very beginning of the review, we watched it because it was a superhero movie. Mm-hmm. I think we're gonna watch it again. If you had a chance to watch it, let us know in the comments. What I also want to point out there's a link in my show notes to somebody did an interview recently with Summer Glau who has released some hints about the future plotline of her character. So if you're interested in this, if you actually enjoyed The Cape, and I don't see why you wouldn't, it was actually pretty enjoyable despite all the criticism. Um, it's fun enough to watch. You might be interested in, in reading up a little bit about those little, if, if little hints. Got a, if you've got a busy TV schedule, though, I don't know if I'd put this one in. Honestly, myself, I've kind of, you know, I've... BSG's dropped off. Enterprise has dropped off. Mm-hmm. I don't watch Fringe anymore. All these little shows have dropped off. So I kind of have one more spot in my dance card for a show. I, this I might this be one. it, but yeah. maybe not. Plus, Smallville's on break, and it's kind of a bad show. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my favorite lines from one of the reviews I read today was, uh, during this time slot on television, if you want to watch people in bad uniform, in bad, bad uh, costumes get the crap beat out of them, there's also Monday Night Raw. Oh, there you go. So. <laughs> well, Fan was in the chat room. He watched it, and he said he liked it. 
I don't hate it. It's just not grabbing me yet. So yeah, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep that in mind. Now, did you hear about this stuff going down in our local town? We're we're based out of the Pacific Northwest mm-hmm. in Washington State, and Seattle is our closest major city. Mm-hmm. And there's actually been sort of our own real life regular citizens putting on capes and masks and going to fight crime. Now, this actually started to come out in early November. There was uh, this picture that Chris is showing now is from one of the earliest articles around the 19th, I think. It was, Absolutely of amazing. I love this guy's costume. He's going with, the, if you're listening to the audio version, he's going with traditional fedora type hat, mm-hmm. a good mask, and then it looks, looks like a nice puffy bodysuit. And I he appreciate. He has bulletproof armor underneath that. Oh, That's okay. Why, yeah. I appreciate the utility belt. Yeah. Now, he has since changed his utility belt, it's no longer bright yellow. That was probably plastic at the time. Anyway, uh, it's been a couple months since these guys first popped up. It's um, amazing. They're, they're part of apparently a national movement called the, uh, what is it, Real Life Superhero Movement, yeah. where these guys put on masks and super suits, and uh, they don't use, well... They do have ballistic of, cups for their private parts. Some of them the actually use guns. I've heard that some of the groups oh. that are popular oh. in like uh, North Texas and areas like that are heavily armed. How do you not really... Well, I mean, the guys locally are only using tasers and pepper spray. Yeah, that's gonna last. I mean, if you're out there doing this kind of stuff, you gotta you gotta protect yourself. Yeah. I, well, actually, one of the stories that I've linked today, courtesy of East Coast Girl from our chat room, uh, sent me a link today to one of the top well-known Seattle superheroes named Phoenix Jones. Phoenix Jones. I was just looking at this article. He's got yeah. quite the outfit. And, He's uh, got quite the outfit. He got his nose broken yesterday. Oh, Phoenix. I'm sorry to hear that. He was trying to break up a fight uh, outside a bar, and one of the guys pulled a gun which caused him to release the other one, and the one that he had released came back and smacked him in the face. Wow, so he's fighting two guys at once that are armed? Yeah. That is some real superhero stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. That's impressive as heck. It is. Wow. I mean, these guys are basically as close as... I don't know. It's not exactly the crime metropolis of the universe. No, crime rates are kind of down, I thought. Yeah. (laughs) So Maybe it's because of him. (laughs) Maybe, right? Duh. I guess I just answered my own question. Now, one of the reasons he said about wearing this bright costume and everything is, you know, he started off just wearing mostly black, like a black hood, black mask, black shirt and everything. But uh, a few times where he would intervene on a crime in progress and then the police would show off or show Show up, up. uh, they mistook him for a bad guy. So now he's adopted a much more uh, iconic uniform that's got more gold streaks and things on it so that the cops can instantly recognize him, even in the dark. How about that? And uh, we'll know that he's trying to be on their side. Yeah, it looks like he's even been—he's even become a celebrity on our local uh, news station. They've got an interview with him. Yeah, this, you've got a, we've got a link in the show notes to uh, an interview here with Phoenix Jones. Uh, One of his of interviews, he actually goes off and, and stops a drunk driver from driving home drunk in the middle of the that? interview. How about he's like, that? Hold on just a minute, and he walks off, and they they get him all on, on film. Now, how many times have you have you seen? Well, I don't want to get into this. We might have some police officers listening, but let's just say I've seen plenty of situations. Just, um, I th- might have been yesterday. I've, my days are still kind of blurry because of the new baby. <laughs> but I think it was yesterday. There was a car broken down in the intersection, mm-hmm. and I could, I looked up, and at the corner of the intersection, there's a coffee a coffee place. It's mm-hmm. the one just where there's the Herfie's Burger oh, stand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a uh, car broken down in the middle of the intersection, and a cop. There's always cops in that little burger. Yeah. Uh, next to the Herfie's, there's it's a like coffee a place. Marysville cop nexus. And he could see the car broken down in the intersection. He's just sitting there drinking his coffee. <laughs> Meanwhile, this guy's out there. Boy, he's got some awesome shoes. This guy's out there in the middle of an interview. Phoenix stopping. Jones would have been out there pushing that car out of the interstate. So head over to the show notes at jupiterbroadcasting.com to check out the link <laughs> with the video interview of this guy in action. That's an awesome find there, dude. I don't want to uh, be too positive about this because, to be honest, the Seattle Metro Police are very much against this movement. They're saying of course that. They are. Yeah, I mean, if people put themselves in the middle of dis- uh, dangerous situations, they're going to end up eventually being another victim. That's the cops' yeah, take yeah, on exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we'll see how it works out. It might not. It's neat, though. It kind of reminds me of Kick-Ass. I know you haven't seen it, but it basically but starts the, the same way. Yeah. It's a, you know, just people getting fed up with the justice system. They take it on themselves, put on a mask, and start kicking ass. There you go. Yeah. I kind of think that's cool. No yes, way. Some of us aren't as brave enough to put on our own masks and go out into the actual street. So instead, I think a lot of us will be logging into DC Universe online. This opened up this morning. Yeah. How I got to admit that I'm really excited. If you guys have been joining us live, you know that many nights uh, over the past month, I've been playing the live beta. Yeah, in the post show. Yeah, during our after party. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll, I think I'll be doing it again tonight just to show off the, the now, beta. Is this, uh, is this an article you wrote here? You looked yeah, this is one of my notes? articles from 10 Ton Hammer. I'm, I've been assigned to this game, so I'll probably be publishing more and more articles. This 
this is a recap of their end of beta event, which was supposed to be this oh, big epic right, battle right. of legends. Right. And it kind of petered out, sputtered. And I, I wrote a recap on it with some pretty pictures, though. So DC Universe Online, on a, from a, on a personal level, looks like one of the first MMOs since Star Trek Online launched that I'm interested in play. Oh, and I didn't know you were interested. Well, I am, well just because as much as I've seen you play it, first of all, uh, they got the feel of Gotham and Metropolis. Oh, God, Gotham nailed. is beautiful. Right? Don't yeah. you think? You go, you go, you run around Gotham and it looks like you're looking at a Batman movie or a Batman comic. Absolutely. And it's, I just love that. And Metropolis looks clean, bright. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, I just, when you were in there, I was like, oh, I'd never seen the game before. I walked mm-hmm. out in the studio. I'm like, oh, Jeremy's in Gotham City right now. Of course I am. And I'm like, I want to be in Gotham City <laughs> right now. Right? So, I don't know. I'm kind of looking Beating at up it. the Joker's henchmen. It was oh. all dressed in purple if, and green. And If you want to know what I'm talking about, you should check out the J-Man's uh, tour of Gotham City, which he shot, he shot here in the studio. Yeah. And then uh, converted that into a 10-ton, or 10-ton, I don't know what my deal is with the way Pawn. I say it. 10-ton hammer. <laughs> Maybe Tauntaun. It's it, in your mind. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this nice. So this, here's a, on for bigger versions, Here's too. an example. Of, uh, of of a shot that you got, uh, and that just looks incredible to me. Yeah, and that's you know I I want I want to be there. That's in game footage too. That's that's right. not like some sort of separate render that they put out for audio folks. We're looking at is that a lighthouse? Yeah, yeah it's a, just a beautiful lighthouse with uh, gothic architecture all over it. Yeah. It's it's just great. Uh, now price is what like fifty bucks if you buy it from Amazon. I think some places are charging sixty surprisingly, but it is fifty to sixty somewhere in that range. Amazon, U.S. dollars. Yeah, it's like yeah. forty seven bucks for their download. And I've got a edition. link you can pick it up on Amazon if you like through our affiliates. So, so this launched today. What's the early buzz us? like? Great. You know how MMO launches are usually like? Just Bad. buggy, crashy, you can't well, log in. And wasn't just like a week or two ago, you were like, I don't know if this is ready for launch. Uh, yeah. And we're past that now. Well, there are still some major flaws. PvP is completely unbalanced. Travel powers in PvP are completely unbalanced. Oh, really? So it's, Frust- it's not so much, frustrating. Yeah, it's not so much a technical snafu at this point, but mm-hmm. it is a, the game needs a shakedown. It needs some a lot of feedback What's the from people. Cost fifteen dollars. Okay. Or since it's on Sony's uh, oh, service, they do or, okay. you can get the all station pass thing, which is thirty bucks, which is the price of two games basically, and you get like twelve games. Yeah, EverQuest, EverQuest, EverQuest Two, Star Wars Galaxy, Vanguard, Star Wars Galaxies, um, a, a bunch of others. I, I didn't want to play any. So of those Vanguard, others, Star Wars Galaxies, and DC Universe Online might be worth the thirty bucks a month. Vanguard, I think, is going to get shut down soon. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was just talking to a guy in the chat room earlier today. He said he loved Vanguard, so I thought, all right. To each his own. Worth, yeah, I yeah. guess so. He must be one of their remaining dozen players. Ouch. <laughs> Snaps <laughs> McGee's, dude. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to pay 15 bucks any word on a on a yearly or anything like that. There's a lifetime available. Uh, that's what I meant. I, meant. I don't actually know the price of the lifetime. I haven't looked into it because I'm a broke hoe, so I couldn't. I right. know I couldn't afford it. Right, that's true. I don't know if I do want to drop that kind of cash right. at the moment. But but anyway, we do have a bit of organization going on within our Jupiter Broadcasting. Oh, yeah? I'm not sure if we're going to be su- forming like super leagues or anything like that, which is like the guild equivalent sure. in this game. Sure, But at least, you know, uh, I've got a link in the show notes to a thread over on Jupiter Colony where you can drop your superhero or villain name, so at least we can add each other to our friends list. That's cool. Also, and maybe the it goes server from there. We'll, yeah. You never know. Never know. I mean, that's what happened with Minecraft and Star Trek Online. It mm-hmm. always happened with DC. Mm-hmm. You know, if that did happen, I think I would pick it up. Yeah, if you have a big group of people you know you yeah. can join and play with. And especially if it's people in the audience. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, I think that just about wraps up tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night. Now, it's Jupiter, a very super Yeah, episode. very superhero episode of Jupiter at <laughs> Night. And we're super live. You can find us uh, Monday through, or, I'm sorry, Tuesday. It's only been a little while now. Tuesday <laughs> through Thursday over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live, 8 p.m. Pacific. And we even have a time zone converter over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. You got time mathed. Right? So you right. Can your own time math and show up whenever you like and it's worth it because we have a really awesome irc chat room that we hang out with during the oh, show speaking of which forklist just told me the lifetime is 199 200 bucks huh info thanks chat room 200 bucks isn't too bad for a game lifetime no, star trek's 300 right now isn't it it was like if you didn't get the deal yeah yeah huh 200 mm. is not bad Tell you what, I'm, I'm definitely might pick that up if we get some people playing. I, yeah. I think that's a must do. Okay, everyone, well, thanks so much for watching tonight's episode of Jupiter Night. And like I was saying, we'd love to see you live. But if not, you'll catch us Tuesday through Thursday every single night over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And until tomorrow night, we'll see you here.